Welcome back. Uh, we will now be dealing with diplomacy here, which is how to interact with the rest of the nations. So as you can see, we already have an alliance offer from Crimea here, and we will see what that actually means. So let's go to them. Uh, we'll see. So the little heart means that they are normally uh, friendly towards us. And if you mouse over this little uh, number here, it'll show you the reasons why. So we're the same religion, and we're a historical friend. There's not uh, too many of these. There, there are some, but uh, there are some historical friends and historical enemies. Uh, they might be a historical enemy, actually. Yep, historical rival. So um, usually there's no bad reason to ally with them. Here, let's take a look at So down here, you can switch between different map modes. There's a lot of them. I don't really want to uh, get into all of these at the moment, but uh, one of the most important ones is the uh, the terrain, which you can see where the mountains are, which uh, may change how you decide to invade or not invade a nation, and the political map mode, which shows you where all the nations are. So Crimea is right here. Uh, they're fairly close to us, and as any good Ottoman would know, pushing through to take. Uh, just the start of Asia here and then pushing up to be uh, meet them is actually a fairly uh, decent strategy before you move down here. However, uh, it's always able to do it, but these are fairly small nations that are easy to conquer. Um, so, we, however, so one of the problems with uh, making an alliance is that if they get into war with somebody, it's going to drag you into it as well. So, uh, you don't have to ally with them right now. Uh, you can if you want, so let's do that. So notice this just changed. Uh, if you're in alliance with someone, they like you a lot more. So let's go to the diplomacy screen. Now we're allies. What do we want to do with this? Well, one of the first things we can do is uh, have a royal marriage, which increases the likelihood of getting an heir as well as making them uh, friends. Later on, if you end up replacing their uh, king with one of your lineage, you will have uh, an additional bonus here, which is uh, the same dynasty, which people from the same dynasty are tend to be friendlier to each other. Now this is called a relationship. So if you notice up here, we have one out of four diplomatic relations. This is a number of nations, not number of uh, different alliances and things like that. So even though we have an alliance with Crimea, we can also have a royal marriage as well. And this will no, still be one out of four. So actually, they haven't accepted it yet. So now it's still one out of four. So we still have three other nations we can have some sort of dealings with. Uh, and these dealings are essentially treaties or uh, alliances or certain like military access, things like that. So let's go back to our diplomacy view. So in the diplomacy view here, we're human, so we don't have a specific personality. Uh, this is our uh, technology group, which gives us, uh, it, it's fairly, it's very uh, close to what everyone else is using uh, in the Western world. Uh, there's really no reason for the Ottomans to ever change uh, from their technology. Um, this is our culture group, which uh, you can look at that in one of these. So when you take over a place with the wrong culture, you'll get certain negatives. Which, uh, let's click on something. So notice this is a so. The, the Greek culture is accepted in our land right now, which I'm not sure if we have any unaccepted anythings. Uh, it doesn't look like it. We'll have to mess with that later. Uh, yeah. So, after a certain amount of money is created by a culture group, it'll become an accepted culture. And basically what happens is, as long as you don't go uh, beyond that from some other method, uh, they'll s you'll basically not get any negatives from a wrong, a bad culture. For likely when we 
take over Albania, it'll probably be easier to see how that works. But he, these are the negatives that it would give you. Basically, you get a third less money from the province, and you get a third less manpower from the province as well. Uh, this basically, it, if you're a fairly large nation, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but it's usually a better idea to, to take over land that is part of your accepted culture first, as you can get the full amount from them. So, moving back to them. Um, we don't have to really worry about anything of this right now. This is just where our, cult, our uh, technology level is right now. This is our reputation. The higher it is, the more likely people will be friendly to you and, and will uh, basically are sort of like your influence. And uh, uh, that's really it. how fast our relations improve. Nothing to worry about. So we're going to start right now with rivals. So we have a few um, rivals. Oh, we can't add one that well. Well, that's shenanigans. But uh, what a rival does is not only does it give you, you can start working on this power projection here, uh, but it gives you certain bonuses toward your rivals. So when you fight them in a battle, you get more out of that. If you fight them, or, or if you get more prestige, and then it's also easier to do uh, spying costs, and you can demand more provinces for them, from them for a lesser cost. So it, it makes it much easier to uh, attack another nation, as well as, the, however, it also makes them like you much less. So let's see. Here's an overview of this is what's going on with our nation right now. So we have, these are uh, Caucus Belly, which is our uh, right to declare war on someone. To our, so any of these nations here, which if you mouse over, we see, so over here, basically we have a claim on this entire area. We say this is all Turkish and it should all belong to us. And so we have this, uh, these claims on all of these. We'll get a bit more into how the Caucus Belly works in the warfare section, but uh, these basically just mean that we can declare war on them without any uh, side issues. Right here it's showing we have a royal marriage and alliance, and someone is trying to improve our relations. So Naples here sees that we are very close by, and they want to uh, stop us from wanting to declare war on them. So they're trying to improve our relations. Uh, this doesn't really mean very much to us, except it can be harder to declare war on them if they, you have a very high relation. You have to take some measures to knock it down. Currently we have a truce with uh, the Baltic nations, as we just recently went to war with them before the game started, and I believe we lost. So that didn't work out for, so well for the Ottomans, but now there's a human in charge. And finally, we are at war. And then right now, we can see that uh, the war score, which is this down here, is at zero. We haven't fought any battles, nothing's gone on yet. Actually, their, their troops are chilling to my land right now, but uh, we'll deal with them in a, a few moments. So that is about it for what uh, these things. So you'll find more, like, you'll, you'll find military access and a few other things as you get more allies and do more things. So now we are going to do something. So let's try to be friendly with uh, uh, these guys. We won't be messing with them too much for a bit. So right now, uh, they like us. Notice attitude friendly. However, we're at a negative 20 relation because we're a bunch of heretics. So, and then as you can see, here are their enemies, which are right here, and their rivals and anything that's going on with them. They're allied with uh, Hassa right now, down here, but whatever. So we could, for example, have a royal marriage. Uh, the downside to a royal marriage is that you take a stability hit, which remember, this is fairly important, every time you declare war on a nation that you have a royal marriage with. So it's sort of like a, uh, um, if you don't expect to go to war with them or you don't want to go to war with them, it's a good idea to have a royal marriage in order to prevent them from wanting to declare war on you. So like for example, if we were worried about, well, uh, 
if we didn't, for example, for whatever reason, if we didn't want to ever uh, go to war, uh, we might take oral marriage. Now, they're not going to, because they really don't like us, but if they did, or maybe the Timurids, eh, no, no, they don't like us either. So, uh, as a large nation like the Ottomans, it's actually fairly much in your interest to not have many marriages, but you could also always have marriages like Morocco or Algiers, someplace where you're not even going to think about invading for a long time. And uh, once again, though, they, they take an additional one of these diplomatic relations. We won't worry about that too much at the moment. So, let's uh, go back to it. So, these are what we can do. Each of these give us different options. So since we're in alliance, these are our alliance actions. We can dissolve the alliance, which we can't do right now because we just sent them a diplomat, actually. Let's uh, hold on. Spend a little time. This is a battle just taking place. And the results. So, let's see if enough time has passed here. Nope. There we go. So, after every time you send a diplomat, for whatever reason, there's a brief timer before you can do anything else. Basically, it prevents you spamming them with, for different things. So, we can dissolve the alliance, which we don't really want to do. Um, we can call them to arms, so we can say, hey, uh, join our battle. This is a fairly rude way of uh, dealing with people, so we're in an alliance right now. If we try to call them to arms, they're going to get a, and, th and if they say no, uh, we will get uh, basically a, a new caucus belly that says, you're a bunch of cowards, now we're going to declare war on you which lets you declare war on them for basically failing to live up to their uh, agreements. Which is actually, if you cannot get a caucus belly for any other reason, you can always uh, for get an alliance with a neighboring nation, call them to war after the war has been going on for a while, and then get a caucus belly against them for being uh, a bunch of cowards and attack them. It's not, it's kind of gaming the system, but it is, uh, it's one of the, the ways you can try to manufacture a caucus belly if there's no other reason. And hey, maybe it uh, actually did happen in uh, uh, world politics back then. You never know. So uh, supporting independence is basically if they're a subject nation, so uh, like a vassal, you can say that you will help them if there's any sort of, if they try to rise up basically. So for example, up here in Denmark, Denmark is currently in control of Norway and Sweden. They have a personal union, see right here, where Denmark is the sole, each of these nations play by themselves, but Denmark sets their foreign policy and then can call them into war and they have to accept. So if Sweden, for example, wanted to bust out of there, we could support their independence. We're way too far away from them for that to ever matter right now, but if we were one of, uh, if we were like Lithuania or Poland, we could do that and then if Sweden tried to go independent, we would join on their side against Denmark. So you won't see that really with the Ottomans, but you could see it uh, in the rest of Europe. Um, or for colonies in the uh, Americas. So let's see. Influence action. We don't need one of these right now, but... So if they were at war with another nation and we really didn't want to get involved, we could try to enforce the peace. Basically, that means if they refuse, we will go to war against them on their opponent's side. Uh, you can do this to try to intervene in wars or to try to stop somebody else from taking land near your border or somewhere else. It's, uh, or it can just drag you into a lot of useless wars, but hey. So if, you, if a country is small enough and its money supply is small enough, you can try to vassalize them if they really, really like you. You need an alliance, a royal marriage, and, well, actually, you can see everything here. Same religion. And they have to be at peace, and they have to really, really like you. Uh, it is very rare to get somebody to voluntarily become your vassal, but it can happen, especially if they're very small, like them or somebody else. Not, none of these people like us very much, but any of these, uh, if you had 
a royal marriage and enough friendliness, you could possibly vassalize them. Uh, a protectorate is fairly similar, except uh, they are, if you're a highly advanced nation, instead of getting a vassalize, you be, they become protectorates. So like the, the nations in Asia or something like that, or sometimes these step ones as well. Uh, proclaimed guarantee is basic, just says, uh, you can do this on neutral nations, so like say Georgia. So we can give them a guarantee right now. So what we just did is I want this gold mine. This is a bunch of money. I want it. Now everybody else wants it too. And we're going to be busy over here with uh, Athens and uh, the Byzantines and Albania and the rest of these little nations for a little while. So what I've just done is, uh, let's uh, wait a bit for it to, actually, I think it just auto happens, yeah. So we can revoke this later on, but right now we're saying if anyone declares war on them, we will also declare war on them on Georgia's side. This is our way of of keeping other nations out of our area of influence. So this is one of the important uh, ways you can uh, game, you know, the the area around you, and to basically prevent other people from attacking. Also, you can use it for people who are not your allies, but you're kind of friendly with too. However, every one time you do that, note we have another diplomatic relation. So you can't just use it on all your allies because you'll rapidly run out of these. And once you go over the diplomatic relations, you lose diplomatic power. So this isn't a hard limit, but it's a soft limit so that you uh, get less and less diplomatic power if you go over it. Um, let's see. Finally, a warning is that if we'll say, um, let's say, uh, I'm trying to think of somebody who would declare, uh, we'll say the Mamluks. So we could send them a warning and say if they attack one of our neighbors here, right here on our border, we will declare war on them. So this is pretty much the opposite of a guarantee. If they go to war with any of our neighbors, then we'll declare war on them. Whereas a guarantee is basically we will come to your defense if you're attacked. Um, those are influence actions. Uh, moving on to relations. These are one you'll probably use some of the most. So improve relation makes people happier with you. So um, we don't really need it right now because we want to keep one of our diplomats. You always need a diplomat for you when you declare war on someone. We'll be declared war on Byzantium here fairly shortly. But improved relation is basically increases this. So this can go up to plus 100 or plus 200 for a vassal from improving relations. And it slowly increases. So the two ways to get this is to one, uh, make somebody friendlier with you. So a, a neutral nation. Well, actually, no, they don't want this. Uh, so Moldavia here, which is actually owned by Poland. So technically Poland's the one we would want to do that with. We can improve our relations with them so they will be more likely to do things we want. Uh, such as uh, give us military access, which they already will, or uh, basing rights or any of this other stuff. So uh, it's very easy though to just keep uh, increasing the opinions of people around you. Uh, to just keep them in your good graces. Or you can use it against somebody who is powerful, say France is looking like they want to declare war on us, or maybe Austria is looking in our direction. We can send forth uh, and try to improve their relation, even if it starts out negative, to make it less likely for them to attack us. So, moving right along. Uh, dynastic actions have to do with uh, basically uh, keeping the throne secure. So we already have royal ties with them. We could use royal ties on a few other nations if we wanted. Uh, we don't have to. We don't really need to right now. And claiming the throne is if we have a royal marriage and, uh, well actually, it, and the same, and one of our heirs is part of their, uh, sort of their line, we can try to claim their throne if their king dies and he has no legal heirs. Uh, this usually doesn't really work very well, and I haven't been able to get it to work all that often. But it is another way to uh, try to take over a, a country, because basically you'll get a claim on their throne, and if you win the war, 
you uh, are in a personal union. So you basically you control all of their external affairs and you can eventually integrate them into your nation. Uh, there probably won't be more on that later because it's a fairly advanced uh, way of uh, business, but covert actions are uh, a lot of these ha come from the uh, espionage tree, uh, but not all of them, but many of them. So, oops, let's go back to where we were. So, this is the most common one that you'll probably be using, which is fabricate claim. This says if I want, let's say, this one right here, I'll have to fabricate a claim on it. So obviously it'll make them upset if we're discovered and we'll get some aggressive expansion. And this is our risk of discovery each month and how long it'll take us. So it would take us one year essentially to fabricate a claim. Basically it writes up uh, what you're doing is making it so that the rest of the world around you believes you have a legitimate claim to take over this territory. You found some very old documents that say that you are the rightful ruler of this area. It is by far one of the most common ways to get a caucus belly if you don't have any other uh, any other kinds of it. You will be fear any nation but say the Byzantines, Ottomans, French. Um, that's really about it. You'll be using uh, Fabricate Claim quite a bit. Uh, other way you can get claims are from missions, which we will use a bit later here. To uh, This one, which will give us a claim automatically. But Fabricate Claim is by far the most common. And what it does, it gives you a reduction in the cost of coring which uh, we'll get into coring a bit later under uh, empire building. But for right now, uh, just know that you you need some sort of claim to declare war on somebody. So if you see here, declare war. See where it says caucus belly? We have none. Plus we'd be breaking a truce and with no caucus belly, that would put us at our the max negative stability, which is very, very bad. And people would be very unhappy with us and we'll get a ton of aggressive expansion, which means everyone else starts to think we're a bunch of warmongers, which is probably true, and they may try to gang up on us to uh, put us down. So, uh, moving right along. So discontent, all these are basically ways to try to sabotage another nation. Uh, they require the use of a diplomat to do, so they're usually not all that great of idea. Support rebels, though, can be fairly nice, if someone's nation is just breaking out and rebels all over the place, you can help your own, or the rebels you want to support. Um, economics is, uh, sending gifts is a fairly easy way to increase our relationships, as you can see. Uh, it's usually, if you need it for a quick boost, for whatever reason. Uh, otherwise, you probably won't use it very much. Um, send them a loan. I pretty much never offer anybody a loan, so I won't really worry about it. Uh, s same with subsidies. Uh, this one's actually fairly just a straight up money transfer. So if Crimea has been at war, war forever and they have no money, you can give them a subsidy or whatever. And selling provinces are something you can do to either vassals or allies that, let's say, if I took over all of Moldavia here, I might be able to sell parts of it uh, to Crimea if I don't want to deal with coring with it myself, and then I just take what I want. Uh, there are certain strategies around that. Uh, I would not worry about it too much, especially on your first game. And uh, an embargo is basically if they have trade in your area, you can embargo them, which reduces their trade power uh, in the same area that you have trade. It also gives them a caucus belly to attack you. Usually I don't use this very much, but you can, especially if you're like a trading nation, you might want to use it against uh, rivals, especially if you think you can take them in battle. Finally, access. You'll probably be using this more often. So, for example, we're in an alliance right now, we can move through our, our land, but you can always uh, ask for military access, which allows you to move your troops through their lands. And note, though, some of the problems. So let's say you declare war on Austria. You have to get military access from Hungary, 
and Serbia in order to even get troops over there. Or you can take a boat. But either way, uh, the, it, it limits some of the abilities of things you can attack uh, and people who can attack you, unless they can also get military access. So that is pretty much all for the main use of the diplomatic screen. You'll be using this a lot, mainly for declaring war and uh, keeping an eye on allies and enemies. And that is about it right now. Let's move on. So, oh, Byzantium allied with uh, Serbia. That's interesting. So if you noticed, if you click on any of these, it gives you an overview of what's going on. It's a very quick overview, but so for example, now when we want to take over Byzantium, uh, we will also be dragged into war with Serbia, which, whatever, uh, we will easily be able to take them. And Athens, which is their vessel. Um, that is, that will be, that's pretty much about it for a overview of how uh, to use the diplomatic screen and how diplomacy works. You'll find a lot more use for it if you're a nation like, say, in the Holy Roman Empire. If you start at, say, Brandenburg, uh, you will be using your alliances to try to ally with Austria and maybe Poland uh, to kick the Teutonic Order out of this land here that you claim. And then slowly work with allies to either take over Pomerania or uh, work on uh, vassalizing some of these smaller nations or whatever else that you want to do. But you'll use it a lot more in, over there and in other parts of the world. As the Ottomans, you don't really have to worry too much about keeping lots of friends since you're really, really powerful already. Well, that's about it. I'll see you.